coming up on Theatre Talk. How was it as a young African-American woman, as a young black woman, winning an Oscar in that environment, which must have been very I, I, what, what I would say, if anything, it was a, a, a blessing and a little odd to be only the fourth uh -huh. African-American woman I know. to win, um, I think as in supporting or just mm -hmm. period. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the CUNY TV Foundation. From New York City, this is Theater Talk. I'm Susan Haskins. And I'm Michael Riedel of the New York Post. Now, Susan, uh, we just saw The Color Purple, a revival on Broadway, and I have to tell you, it is one of the best musicals I have seen in a long time. And I say this as someone who was not crazy about the first production I saw, but over the years I began to listen to the album, which has a fantastic score. But this production shows me that The Color Purple deserves to be considered among the classics of the American musical theater. Yes. It's directed by our old friend, Mr. John Doyle, making his umpteenth appearance on <laughs> Theater Talk. Now listen. <laughs> Star <laughs> Broadway director. Okay, Mike. We discovered I don't, you. Listen, no, I don't we, like that word old. <laughs> <laughs> our, our, how about veteran? You That'll do. That? Uh, veteran, 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 yeah. We discovered you with a famous Sweeney Ta that you did with just the... Well, uh, yeah, you did. Movies. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You'd be I nothing mean, without I was it, doing yeah. it before you discovered I, me. I so, the, <laughs> so we're told. Yeah, yeah but, but that's true. That's 10 years ago, you know, exactly yeah. 10 years ago. And I remember having dinner with you no. at Patsy's. Yes, you spoke about yourself for two hours. I liked <laughs> 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 Wait, I, I thought that. I was interviewing you. I was interviewing you, wasn't I? <laughs> I do remember an extremely good bottle of yes. Italian red wine. There you go. Um, John has assembled an absolutely superb cast for the color purple, and I'm delighted tonight to be joined by Danielle Brooks as Sophia. Welcome to Theater Thank Talk. you so much. Uh, a brilliant uh, new discovery for us here on Broadway. That's Cynthia Arrivo as <laughs> Celie. Welcome. Uh, you, from you. England. Yes. Welcome yes. to America. Thank you. And, oh, this um, minor <laughs> pop star you may have heard of before. Uh, what's her name? <laughs> Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> Who is making her Broadway debut as Shug? Welcome all and congratulations Thanks. on the Thank success you. of the show. Thank you very much. John, I want to start with you. What uh, prompted you to take a look at The Color Purple? Um, you know, I didn't choose to, to be honest with you. I was doing a uh, road show, the Sondheim musical, right. Sondheim Weidman musical at the Chocolate Factory. And David Babani, who runs the Chocolate Factory, on the opening night said to me, oh, I've got this piece I'd like you to look at. And, you know, you get that a lot. If a show's been vaguely successful, yeah. you get that on opening nights. I thought, oh, yeah, yeah, fine. And he said... I said, well, what is it? He said, it's the color purple. And I thought, he's lost his mind. I mean, I'm not going to do the color purple. You know, for lots of reasons, some of which are really, like, serious reasons. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I thought it was questionable. Um, but uh, I said, okay, well, send me the material, you know. And then I thought, I really, if I'm going to take this at all seriously, I ought to read the novel again, which I'd read w when it first, not long after it first came out. And um, I thought, oh, this is beautiful you know this is special and beautiful and deserves to be told I didn't know what I felt about going back to the chocolate factory to do that you know there's no money there's no resources there's a lot of reasons not to but there was enough reason that I thought in the in the material to do so and I, you know I don't know if I've ever taught you about this but I I went to university here in this country I went to the University of Georgia right where the play, or the play takes place yeah. where the piece takes place so that's what led me to doing it in, um, in London. And then I uh, put together a, a, a lovely company there, which uh, Cynthia was there. We'd not met before, we met at an audition. And um, that felt very special. And we had a, 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 a really good time with it. Mm -hmm. I certainly didn't expect that it would come to Broadway at that point in time. Um, but Mr. Brantley came to see it, and he quite liked it. And <laughs> That's why we're that helps. talking to each other today. Really. <laughs> that helps in this business. Yeah. Now, I'm curious, um, Cynthia, mm -hmm. when is the 
the, the first time you came across The Color Purple as the novel, or did you see the show, or I the saw, movie with Whoopi? I saw the movie first, and then I read the book. I had never seen the show. Mm. Um, and then I wanted to be truer to the book than the movie in performance, so I went back to the book again. Mm. Yeah. And what does that entail, being truer to the book than well, the movie? Well, I guess the, the book is almost a series of letters, and in it, you get to see the world through Celie's eyes. You see what she sees, you feel what she feels. So it's less of a look outwards, but you can look through through her eyes. You see what's, what sh she sees. Mm -hmm. Now, Jennifer, when you were a kid, did you see the musical at all ever? Or? Well, um, I, I, I saw the film first, yeah. obviously, then read the book, and then later um, saw the play. Mm. Uh, yeah, but it wasn't when I was a kid, though. <laughs> I was quite grown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't want to say <laughs> so like, oh, You all look so young. They, they all look so young from, you. this, from this end of the table. They look a, young, a lot younger than we are, like, I think. As a kid. <laughs> as a kid, though. <laughs> <laughs> and the impact on you, Daniela, the, the novel first, or did oh, you see the... Man. I actually saw the movie first. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I believe I was at church. I can't quite remember where I was, but I, I believe I was at church at a summer camp watching it. And then I saw the production. It was the first Broadway show that I ever saw. Oh, wow. At, at 15, mm -hmm. my dad took me, and that changed my world. That was the first time I was like, I really want to pursue this as an actress because I saw people that looked like me on stage and made it possible to say, yeah, I can do this. So it, to have it be full circle, it blows my mind that I'm sitting here playing Sophia uh, when when it's the first show I saw. Did you see the New York production or? Yes, yeah, the Broadway production. The Broadway production, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, now, Cynthia, you, if I if I have this correctly, you auditioned for John. Mm -hmm. Did you, you did you know who she was, or no. was just some, did she walks in off the street mm -hmm. and what was what was the impact? I can remember the terrible, horrible, dirty room we were in. Yeah, I remember. That. <laughs> I remember and I remember that. you. It was all rather fast. You had to go and do something else. Yeah. Am I right? That same never day. I had, I think I had, it was either a rehearsal Something or another that audition that I had to go. Things. Yeah. And I, and I heard Cynthia sing, and I thought, please God, may she do this, really. That's, <laughs> to be honest, because I was thinking, I don't know how I'm going to find the right kind of human being. You know, for me, look, skill is a big part of the yeah. thing, right? Of course, you've got to be able to open your cup and a certain sound come out of it, all of that. But more importantly for me is the humanity of the person, it's the human being, you know. Um, that's how I rehearse, that's how I work, mm -hmm. and that I hope sometimes occasionally brings out the best in all of us. Um, and I just felt that we would have a good time, really. And then always thinking, you know, you always, people always say, oh, well, then we'll take it to Broadway, and then you always think, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. not really actually going to happen. I never yeah. think it's going to happen. <laughs> well, it did happen. Yes. Um, <laughs> But then for us to come back into the rehearsal room with a whole new group of people mm -hmm. um, and to negotiate that in terms of not wanting ever to look like we knew more than anybody else, because right. that yeah. was really important, yeah. we sort of very... went back to square one. Yeah. And this group of people, uh, and look, you must get so many companies who sit at a table and say, our company's so special. You know, I, 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 that's what happens in show business. But We're I, all lovies. Mm -hmm. But I'm absolutely convinced that the that the work you saw and the reaction you have to it is because of what happened in that, in that rehearsal yeah. room. Um, in that the, it's a very, very special group of people yeah. who have really committed themselves to telling the story, not just to telling the color purple, but possibly, because of me, I suppose, telling the story in a way that they're not used to story Well, to. what I love, though, I love the chemistry among these three. Mm. Oh, yeah. And so, um, I'm going to ask Jennifer, though, when... When did you decide to commit to a Broadway show? I mean, you have a gigantic singing career. You can play all over the world. And now it's eight performances a week wow. for the foreseeable future. <laughs> well, it was something I've always wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and for me, in my life, I always say, you know, I have, like, <clears throat> time frames of when I want things to happen. Mm -hmm. And I said, when I turned 35, I want to do Broadway. And it just happened to be at 34, and the timing was right, and I literally got a call asking if I wanted to do Color Purple. And I was like, sure. It was like not even a second thought about it. I didn't even know what role I was committing myself to or any of that. And I was like, sure, of course I'll do Color Purple. I never imagined that it would be my first show, mm -hmm. you know, or if whatever show that would be. But <clears throat> I knew it was something I wanted to do. And so the timing was right. I felt like it was all about the timing. But now you're, you're a big star. Did anybody on your team say, well, Jennifer, you can't, 
this is a supporting role. No. No. All right. Not at all. It's just a strong part. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it was, it was more up to me than anything. You know, I was like, yep, I'll do it. Yep, I'll be there. You know, um, and I really didn't think much else about it, but those turned out to be the most successful things for me, the things that I'm just like, okay, whatever, okay. let's do it, you know? And this was one of those moments, and I felt like I reacted to Color Purple in that way so quickly because it's a story that's so dear to, I think, all of us, you know what I mean? And so, again, I saw it too, you know, like, oh my God, I love this show. And being an actress, I never thought of me in it, but who wouldn't want to be a part of it, you know? So I'm gonna pose a, a taxing question. I'll start with you, Danielle. She just said the color purple is a story that's so dear to us. Mm -hmm. Why? I think it's a personal thing, honestly, why it's dear to each person. But what is it? What is the story that's? What is the strong thing in the story that draws you? You know, an easy question. I, I would say what it is. It's it's real. It speaks of reality. And I've always say, if you are living, you can relate to color purple. No matter what color you are, no matter what age you are. It's like looking at Celie's story, for instance. Like you sit and you watch her go through all of these life struggles and 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 setbacks. And when you see her make it through it, it lets you know you can make it through whatever you're going through. You see the woman who's so abused, yes. this monstrous life that she is supposed to lead being conscripted into marriage. Mm -hmm. I am so haunted by the oppression that she has to overcome. Resilience. Yeah. I think that's ultimately what the story is about, resilience, right. fight, fighting through. And I think it's relatable because that's what everyone goes through. Mm -hmm. Everyone goes through in, something. In some way. You know? Yes. Um, yeah. They have, we go through that personally. Um, Sadly, so. the color purple is not out of date. No. It's no. It's completely it, it's so current. No, because, because the I, idea that she has to go and, you know, not only be basically raped by this guy all the time, yeah. but cook and clean for him yeah. and take care of take his care house, of and that is, house. and be separated from her sister, and right. that is her life. Yeah. But one thing I also like to bring to the table is she was definitely, she is the main character, mm -hmm. but there's also, you look at Mr. Mm -hmm. and look at his story yes. and all of the things that he's fighting against. Sophia being beaten by her husband and trying to yeah. get her marriage. Like, if you go through every character, character. we're all and dealing someone with someone to connect to. Yeah. 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 That's so the hard one, isn't it? it? Mr., mm -hmm. the, who's the man that you have to marry and who yeah. gives, mm -hmm. gives you a bad time about. Yeah, we don't. We guys, we don't come off too well in the, the color purple but in the beginning. Well, of the do you have <laughs> sympathy for him in the end? You just said you did. I, I do it's, not. I, I, I never think of it as sympathy. I think that it's an acceptance of someone who didn't quite understand how to go through life and right. is just now learning. Uh, right. Oh, yeah. And he changes yeah, as much as she does. Yeah, he does. Very right. much so. Yeah. He, he apologizes. Yeah. That's a big change in life. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and as someone who doesn't really know how to apologize, and oh, but absolutely. has found some to a woman yeah to a yeah, woman exactly. has found a, a, a way of of coming to terms with actually being human about mm -hmm. something and, and and accepting responsibility mm -hmm. for wrongdoings and saying i, I need i'm still learning mm -hmm. i'm sorry yeah well i was thinking about this too because i thought oh boy these guys are really coming off as pretty terrible being a guy sitting there in the audience mm -hmm. And then I realized, well, if he only knew, like an abused child, if he only right. knew right. that abused right. him, exactly. all he knows is how to respond to something with mm -hmm. violence. That's, right. And that's why exactly. that scene with his father yes. is in that's the play. Yes. So right. will, will we right. cut the same slack to slaveholders? Uh, <laughs> well, well, it's, kind of it's, not, to, it's not to forgive him. <laughs> she got us on that one. <laughs> no. It's not to forgive him for his behavior, but it's to understand. Right, yeah. and yes. sometimes yeah. you can deal with things better when you have an understanding, understanding of where, of where they come from. Yeah. And I think as a people, we have done that. Yeah. Yes. Sure. Yes. yes, I want to get this in just because we may run out of time. Right now, we're in the, we're in the Oscar time. Mm -hmm. And of course, right now, we're having this Diversity. Talk. Diversity yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, you've worked in Hollywood. You're on a hit TV show. You will be working in Hollywood and on a hit TV show soon. Thank you. What is your reaction to this, this Oscar so white controversy? I think that right now, on Broadway particularly, we're having a great uh, time when it comes to diversity anyway. So I feel like we're sort of a living example of what it can be 
everywhere you else. You and your show, yes. Yes, not just our show. I don't no, think no, just no, our show. Broadway. 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 Yeah, it's amazing. Broadway but once itself. Broadway's ahead of everybody else. Do you know? <laughs> Do you know not, mm -hmm. I, I just think I think we have to broaden what we yeah. say is diversity. Yeah. Because diversity isn't just throwing a black person no. or a black no. show into no. a space and that's called diversity. That's not diverse. Well, to me, theater and Broadway is so diverse because right. you have shows that are classical. You have new pieces. You have you have the the plays, the musicals, the the hip hop that you have that's what makes up diversity yeah. to me yeah um, and, and you know you look you sit in our auditorium any night any any night because yes. people mm -hmm. will always say gosh do you always get nights like that believe me oh. it's something and if you and you have got approximately 50 50 yeah black and white yeah it was very Young, mixed audience last yeah. yeah and you'll get you'll and and yes we could all have the, we at this side of the table could have the expectation that the that the black person will put their hand up to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. during the show. I put my no, hand up. Please. White people yeah. are as well. <laughs> and, right. as soon as you say, and that proves that we're all like at the same call. I, My hand was, I said, why is my hand up? It was <laughs> everybody's <laughs> amen. My back. girlfriend was with me. She said, that's yeah, diverse. Sure. <laughs> but back, <laughs> back to Oscar so white. <laughs> the right. song's so good. My hand is up. I loved it. It was. It, 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 oh, oh, I was okay. Oh, but back to but Oscar so white. Yeah. Do you think, though, that in the business that there's this still this built-in Racism to the system? I, 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 I don't want to say it, it, it's racism. I think people aren't aware yeah. or, or choosing to ignore and not understanding what, what, how it's affecting people, yeah. I may think. I, may I ask a question? Mm -hmm, please. How was it in your year when you won your yes. Oscar? Yes. Um, in what way do you mean? Well, how was it as a young African-American woman, as a young black woman, winning an Oscar in that environment, which must have been very... I, I, what, what I would say, if anything, that I do remember most is I thought it was a, a, a blessing and a little odd to be only the fourth uh -huh. African-American woman I know. to win, um, I think, as in supporting or just mm -hmm. period. Right. Just now it's about eight of us. Mm -hmm. You know, in our day and age, mm -hmm. that should be unheard of unheard today. Unheard of. And yeah. to be the first African-American singer to grace the cover of Vogue, or the first African-American mm -hmm. anything, the first African-American to uh, mortalize a Disney princess, black mm -hmm. Disney princess. It's like, we're still on the first? And in, like, in leading actresses, there, I think there are only two women to have won a leading role for an Oscar. And I just think, as, like, as far as diversity goes, it should include what the world is. Right. Correct. We're all here. Right. We're all in it. Right. And our art reflects that. Why isn't it all acknowledged? Right. It right. should all be acknowledged. If we're all putting something in the pool of the entertainment, all of that should be looked at. And until then, it's not fair. Yeah. It's interesting. When I was watching The Color Purple last night, thinking of it as a, uh, as a classic um, American musical now, it has in it, doesn't matter what the setting is, what the ethnicity of the characters are, but it has the driving force of all musicals, which is the life force of these characters. I was thinking actually of your Sweeney Todd. Mrs. Lovett is in her own way Seely. Oh, completely. Because she's, no matter what comes at her in life, yeah. she is going to barrel through she and She just survive. dies for it yeah. at the end, unlike Seely. Yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. I, I don't see but, Mrs. But, Lovett as Seely. No, no, but, I have but, to but, think but, about that. But. No, 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 but, but what I'm getting at is. She's a like Seely. Exactly. And the spirit of American musicals, like Eliza Doolittle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's you about know, the they all start right. here with Particularly nothing. in the women, it's about right. survival. And it's, and it's the Lovett life, it's the driving force of their lives that takes them through the show and brings you along with them. Yeah. Susan, you're so square. I know. I'm just thinking of this of Seely chopping people up and putting yeah. them in the she, pot. She, 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 she wanted to. She could. 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 She Really and truly, the only thing she knew of, well, you know, violence begets violence. The only thing she knew of to get something right was to, to create. Yes. I think in relation to your point about the American musical theatre, if we look back in time at the strong women, you know, the, the, the Mermans and mm -hmm. the Lupones and... Mama Rose. Bernadette yep. Peters and all of those women who are all strong. I work with some of them. I know they're all strong, wonderful forces of nature. We've not until now had the opportunity to see black women take on that mantle. It's it's a new door, I think. I really, I really, really do. I, that's not to say that Audra hasn't played strong women. Don't get me wrong. Right. But the way the right. the way the you know 
th this piece in particular is about women, yeah. Yeah. Mm. fundamentally about women. And a lot of mu musical theatre writers have chosen our woman to write about, but not women to write about. Right. We've only got a couple minutes left, but I, I want to go back to your direction of this because, what, you know, there was that Color Purple production, and that was a very diffuse staging in that production, which it made it, it, I didn't feel it worked so well either. Where did you get the inspiration? I mean, you've boiled things down before to stage it in the way you did. Yeah, what was your guiding principle? First of all, I'd like to say that it's really much easier with a musical the second time out, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Uh, doing a new musical on Broadway with all of those forces against you, and that's what it feels like, is no easy thing. So God bless Gary Griffin. I'm, I'm the lucky one, mm -hmm. right? Right. Um, uh, but, but uh, the, the, you know, people call me a minimalist, whatever that might mean. You, it's not true, actually. I've never said that about myself. But that's what they say about me. And they you know, need you bring it in under budget. Yeah, that's right. You know, I, I do it cheap. I am interested in the audience's uh, imagination. That's all I'm interested in. And I do believe that if theatre is going to survive, then it has to do that. It has to, because that's what we have that is different from the movies, yes. which are so glorious. And it is, is this extraordinary thing that every human, every member of the human race that comes into that auditorium has got the opportunity to imagine. And uh, there are certain techniques used in the earlier part of the story, when she births a baby, for example, yeah. from a sheet, that is about the imagination, right? I can remember, I don't want to get too personal, but you know, I remember being a little boy taking a sheet off my bed and pretending it was a baby. What we have is our own stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's all I have as an artist, my own stuff. Um, so the mechanisms that you Love use that. to get you to the point that the audience imagines is what I'm interested in. And I really do believe that that's why at the end of that evening, when it comes to the amen, some nights they sing with it, and it's like it's because they've all been. They think <laughs> they've they big. think they've been to Africa. Mm -hmm. All that happened were some women put baskets on their head and slightly oh, and you have changed the, the way they held it. And them. you have the lovely. Um, yeah, the cloth. They the thought they had been to Africa. Yeah. 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 So it's but the techniques are very very simple. Now it can take a. I'm old, so it takes a whole lifetime to learn how to be simple. Now let me ask you though. You have a three very strong personalities, three divas, if you will. <laughs> good is, divas. In the good. good <laughs> I want to ask you: Is good. he a bigger diva than all of you put together? <laughs> He's a seasoned diva. Veteran diva. You know who's in charge, is yeah. it? Uh, oh yes. 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 And what, Without uh, a word. What are you learning from this man as a director? I mean, he's been around. Not that he's well, old, but he's been around for a little yeah. bit. I've learned a lot because this is me. For me, this is all very new, and because John knows this world and is from England as well, it's like someone is able to sort of hold my hand mm -hmm. as I go along. And I was all, all, sometimes when we when we're doing stuff, I, I'm just I always check: Are you going to be there? Are you going to be there? And he goes, "Yeah, I'm going to be there." So everything from how to just to settle, how to to live in the, this place, how to uh, make the the schedule work with me so that I know my energy can do everything, how to not get so bogged down with certain things when I, you know, how to make sure that the story is the most important always. You know, it, there's a number of things that this one has taught me, very much so, uh, and, and it's just helped the whole process to getting to this point. Mm -hmm. And for you, Danielle, something that... Oh, man, there's been so many things. But what I what's coming to my head, really, <laughs> I, I have a notebook of things. Uh, <laughs> but what I've been thinking about is um, leaving, bringing what's necessary and leaving the rest. Mm -hmm. I remember one time we were in rehearsal, and he kept taking all of my props and all of my costumes and I was I didn't get a jacket anymore or like the the nice fur coat and I was like I'm missing the coat why did I not have it <laughs> and he was like you don't need things to add the character the less the more the more that people see the more mm -hmm. that you know like we're talking about imagination and that and you and you get to use your own creativity mm -hmm. so that's something that's really stuck with me bringing what's necessary and getting rid of the cloaks that's not um, is something that I've gained from this one. And for you, uh, making your Broadway debut? I have to add to that <clears throat> and say learning that simplicity is the key and trusting what you have, you mm. know, and, and that. And just, like, hanging on his every word. <laughs> I just sit and watch him like, no, you're the director, I'm not taking my eyes off of you, you know, <laughs> things like that because he is, like, just, I don't know, like, we're just so in awe and captivated mm. by everything he has to say and, and the way he teaches, it's she, amazing. Um, she, you know, 
she's not been on a Broadway stage. None of them had been on a Broadway stage before, yeah. but she's been on the theatrical stage less than these gals, mm -hmm. right? And uh, I tell, first of all, you asked about supporting role. I don't like that word, supporting. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, I, it, uh, Jen, I think what's been so humbling is that Jen has become so part of our family in making the th this piece work. And that's beautiful. That's been really, really genuinely beautiful to see. And that's come out of us all listening to each other. Mm -hmm. And I, I, going back to the issues of color as an elderly white man. You said it, I didn't. Well, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, I said both of them. Elderly, <laughs> three, elderly white man um, telling the story of the color purple. Uh, it's been really deeply humbling to, to feel that we were all in the same room mm. at the same time. Mm. And I don't think you could have worked if, you know, we wasn't yeah. on the same page, yeah. you know, and not on one accord. Absolutely. And I think we're all extremely on one accord. Yeah. And I think that's the magic. That's I feel like everybody thing. feels starts starting with the head over here. Well, it's still, it looks Absolutely. like when you take <laughs> when you're when you uh, when the characters are over, you take your bows. And I always look to see how the actors are. I think I think these people are really having fun in this show. Oh, yeah. The people on stage are having as much fun as the people in the audience yeah. do oh, yeah. it. So yeah. it's a terrific revival of the color purple at the Bernard B. Jacobs Theater, directed by John Doyle and starring Danielle Brooks, Cynthia Arrivo, and Jennifer Hudson. Thank you very much for being our guest tonight on Thank Theater Talk. Thank you. Thank you. Breathtaking Thank you. experience. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Our thanks to the Friends of Theater Talk for their significant contribution to this production. Theater Talk is made possible in part by the Frederick Lowe Foundation, the Corey and Bob Dinelli Charitable Fund, the Noel Coward Foundation, Carrie J. Fries, the Dorothy Strelson Foundation, and the New York City Department of Cultural Affairs. We welcome your questions or comments for Theater Talk. Thank you.